I get tons and tons of people pretty much every day um, asking how I get a good amount of crank to my spoons when I carve them. And to explain that, I, I first have to make sure that everybody that's watching knows what spoon crank is. So I've got a normal metal eating spoon here, nothing fancy. And if you look at, if you look at it, it's not perfectly flat. There is an angle between the handle and the bowl. And that relationship is called the crank. And depending on what you're using a spoon for, whether it's an eating spoon or a cooking spoon, you might want more or less crank. For cooking spoons, personally, I generally like a lot less crank. They tend to be more straight. And for eating spoons, um, they just tend to sit in the hand better and, and feed you better if they have more crank to them. This one's got a pretty good amount of crank, especially if you put it next to this one. Now, while it's not always necessary to have this amount, it can be fun to make them this way, and some people prefer um, to eat with a spoon with more crank. Um, this one I just finished yesterday and is out of apple wood, and for those of you wondering, it's from straight grained wood. This is not from a crook or anything like that. So I figure uh, I squared up a blank of cherry. Excuse me, getting a drink of coffee. And uh, I figured I would try to explain this the best I can. So first we're going to take a design of some sort. And I've been liking this uh, asymmetrical eating spoon here. And I generally have the crank already marked out on the template itself. On most of my templates anyways. And as you can see the template fits this piece of wood pretty much perfectly. And where that line is, I'll continue it off onto this piece of wood and put that aside for a minute. And then I will use a folding saw to trace over that line and make basically a depth cut or a stop cut. And you don't wanna go crazy here. You wanna check every now and then and see how deep you're getting on both sides because sometimes you might have your, your saw leaning more one way or more the other. But I have a nice thick blank here, so I can afford to uh, give this one a little extra crank. So I'm at about maybe a half an inch depth on one side and about three eighths on the other. Even that up a little bit. Looks pretty good. So the crank is established in a very, very early stage of the axe work. Basically, I took a, a log, turned it into a more or less rectangular billet, created my stop cut, and I'm already going to get into creating the crank. So let me, let me do this as visually as possible. I have this stainless steel scale here, which if I place it here and draw a line... And then draw a line here as well. Hopefully you guys can see this. That is more or less the crank that I'll be going for on this spoon. And you can take it a little farther. If you know the depth of your keel, like let's say my keel is going to be, I don't know, half an inch deep, which might be, might be a lot. But I can, uh, I can make that thinner as I go. Connect to that line. And I generally like to make my handles pretty thin these days. So some of you might be looking at this going, oh my gosh, I gotta make a, a spoon that's that thin. Mess that line up. But that's basically, you're looking for kind of that, I always call it like a Nike swoosh almost. It's a very squared up Nike swoosh. So, I generally speaking, I should have did this on this side so that I can see what's going on, but um, I'll show you as I go. I take almost from the end grain and at a slight angle and start cutting towards that stop cut. And then I just follow that through all the way until I hit 
you know, that line. And I don't typically, matter of fact, I don't ever um, put these lines on the side of my billets, but it's there for a visual reference for you right now. A little bit of cleanup and I'm pretty much there. Um, this cut is especially hard to make if you do not have um, a really sharp axe with a very flat bevel. If you have a rounded bevel, this is a lot harder to do. But as you can see, I'm right on that line. So what I want to do next is take this piece out. And I start by taking just the corners down. And you don't want to go too far because you will chop right through the end of your bowl. So as you get through the material, you want to ease up your pressure and put a little bit of back pressure on it. And then you want to do the same thing here. Getting there. So you're basically left with a lump in the middle that's V-shaped. But on both sides, you've cut all the way to your line. So you just want to take that out. farther to go still so that's pretty much where we want to be now you can, at this stage, redraw your design on, which I'll do now. And basically you just line up your crank line on your template with the crank line that you've cut into your billet. And I'll just do a quick job of tracing this on. This stage is a little bit forgiving. You can, uh, even after this, further establish your crank or lessen it, depending on what you do. So it's not 100% make or break. It's not like what you see now is set in stone necessarily. So the side profile and the top view. And then you just wanna remove material on this side of the lines. I'm gonna actually go a little bit thicker than um, the line that I drew on the side, and you'll see why in a minute. And again, taking off the corners. And then do the same thing on this side. pretty decent so then I'll refine the middle kind of eyeballing every now and then to see where I need to take more material 
look at it from the end. Make sure things are uh, symmetrical. And at this point, I'll take my or my uh, my saw again. Let's see if you can see it a little better. Hopefully. And right here and right here, I'm going to create stop cuts, and this makes the axe work a bit easier. Going pretty much all the way up to my pattern. I leave a, a little bit of space, 16th of an inch or less. Some people will go all the way up to the line. Some people will go, I don't know, way far away from it, I guess, but that's not necessary. And that's what we're left with. Turn the lock again. So I will go straight in from the end grain here, assuming that the wood is nice and straight. If I've got uh, wobbles to the, to the grain at all, I will be very careful when doing this or do it differently. But if I can trust that it's gonna split pretty straight, then I'll go ahead and drop cut straight from the end grain. So and you just wanna come up to the edge of your pattern here. A lot of this is gonna be redundant from my last videos, but for the sake of uh, showing the finished project, I'll, I'll see this through all the way to a spoon blank. Right on top of my line there. I'll do the same thing on this side. Quick little drop cut. A little bit of bulk removal. Then you gotta get this quadrant, this quadrant, this quadrant, and this quadrant off. And I always save um, cutting the excess off the end until pretty much last, because a lot of shock is absorbed into that, and I don't wanna cut all the way up until my pattern now and ruin what's potentially wood that I wanna keep. So you can start pretty much on any one of these four quadrants. I usually start with the, uh, the handle. And then I'll do the two quadrants behind the shoulders of the bowl. And you have to be very, very careful when you're coming up to your stop cut because if you go through a little too far, you're gonna put a micro nick in the end there, which while this dries will radiate into the back of your bowl and is the source of a lot of problems for a lot of people that are newer at carving. And admittedly, some people that uh, have been carving for a while. Some of you might notice that uh, I haven't used this axe on camera yet. And this is, I think, the third spoon that I've used it on. And so far, I'm absolutely loving it. Um, it is the Journeyman by Woodsman's Finest. It's the, the heavier of the two axes that he offers. And uh, kind of spoke to Max a little bit about um, what's to be expected from this axe and his impressions. And I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to getting some spoons under my belt and giving my impressions on it as well. So far, I mean, it's pretty early, but like I said, I've only done, this will be my third or fourth spoon blank. Um, but so far, I'm pretty impressed. I will just say that and leave it there.
So that leaves us with that. Still a little thick. What I like to do is take off the corner here and here, as well as back here on the back of the shoulders before I finish up. I could still do a little bit of thinning of the handle if I wanted to, and uh, make sure to square things up while I'm at this stage, because it's a lot easier to do with the ax than the knife. Both sides are symmetrical. You're kind of laying the foundation for um, your knife work. So at this stage, you want to do as much as you can to make the knife work easier. The axe is a lot kinder to your body than the knives are. It uh, puts a lot of stress on your joints when you use the knives. And the axe, when used correctly, um, alleviates a lot of that. Okay, take some off the back of the shoulders. This is a little bit thicker than I normally would go, um, which isn't a problem. This cherry cuts really, really nicely, so um, I'm not afraid to have to spend a little time on it with the knives. Or I could take it down just a little bit right now with a simple drop cut, blend in the handle a little bit. this again and that is pretty much good enough for me so that is start to finish from a billet to a spoon blank and you can get closer to line if uh, if you're comfortable doing so some people will get farther away and that's okay too it all depends on your skill level but that is what you get and here's a side-by-side -side with a regular eating spoon if that's what you want to call this. <laughs> this is a normal one to me. Um, and then alternatively, with another cranky spoon. So you can see that this one has pretty much the same amount of crank. And that's about it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that explained some things for you guys, um, clarified some questions you might have had. And uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.